I confirm. Thank you. Um, in that case, we move to page 130. We have another notice of motion um, submitted by Councillor Cordover. It is headed writing to the Minister regarding the Health and Environmental so Services Bylaw. There is an officer's response from Mr Basham. Do I, so Councillor Cordover is moving. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Midgley. Councillor Cordover. Thank you very much, Mayor. So the context around this is that part seven Clause 25, removal of trees on private property from the former Health and uh, Environmental Services bylaw that Kingborough Council had, was, um, was deemed to be, or legal advice was received, that it was in contravention or in conflict with the planning scheme. And the reason that my understanding is that one of the main reasons why it's purportedly in conflict with the planning scheme, according to legal experts, is because of IPD4. And this is largely a state government created problem. IPD4 was passed, uh, I believe, in February of 2021. So this is interim planning directive number four, exemptions, application requirements, special provisions and zone provisions, which came into effect on the 22nd of February. Local councils, in my opinion, should be able to make decisions around bylaws for the good governance of their municipality. And unfortunately, in my opinion, the state government has been, over time, making a concerted effort to withdraw the amount of power that local governments have uh, and to centralise or consolidate the head of power within the state government. And so we get decisions like IPD4, which, according to legal experts, has limited or constrained a local council's ability to make decisions in the best interests of their own citizens. And of course, if you're in Westbury, the people of Westbury have a different a different set of needs and requirements in their local area as somebody in Hewenville. And that's okay. And that's the role and the purpose of local government is to be able to have that local knowledge and make those decisions in the best interests of their community. And so what I would like to see happen and what I'm recommending in this motion tonight is that because, according to our legal advice, it was essentially the fault of the state government in the provisions accorded to them by IPD4, because they kind of created this, I would like us to write to the planning minister and seek a solution. And so we have received 184 submissions about this health and environmental services bylaw, which is an enormous number um, from the community saying that they want Kingborough Council to have bylaws that protect trees on private property, or at least make stipulations about trees on private property. 184 people wanted us to do something about it, and we've heard that it's the state government that's constraining us from doing something about it. So I'd like us to write to the state government, to the planning minister, to seek a solution. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gladright. Thank you. Am I allowed to ask a question of Councillor Cordover? Mm, yep. yep. Yes. Thank you. Um, Councillor Cordover, I, I'm, I'm with you with the sentiment, but I think your timing is all out because we haven't established, we haven't yet received the third legal opinion. And so if that third legal opinion comes back and says that it's not contrary, then um, why write the letter? So my question is, yeah, can you address that, please? Councillor Cordover. I thank you. I thank the Councillor Gladright for her question. And what we need to do is to try every avenue and every possibility to protect trees in Kingborough. And this is just one mechanism to do that. And in the resolution, it provides for two weeks within this resolution to convey this position. Uh, I would hope that we will move precipitously to seek senior council's advice on whether or not the tree bylaw is in conflict with the planning scheme. Um, I think there's other issues with IPD4 as well, but at this stage, this is just one tool in our armamentarium, one option that we have to send a clear message rather than just in the confines of this chamber talking about how, uh, talking about our displeasure with the planning scheme. This is actually taking some step to remedying that. Okay. While I completely support what you're trying to do here, I, I can't support this because I think that we need to wait for the third legal opinion first. Thank you. Are there any further speakers on the motion? 
are you all in a food coma? <laughs> no, no further speakers. All right. Um, well, I will just make a brief contribution. Um, I will be supporting this motion. I do believe um, that we should be drawing this matter to the attention of the state government because it seems, as we've heard tonight in our considerations as a planning authority, there are a range of implications of um, uh, interim planning um, directive number four that was issued in February. And um, look, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not hopeful that we're going to get a very positive response, but it is the first step in um, having the state government sit up and listen. And if we if we don't get a, an acceptable outcome through this, I believe we should um, perhaps take a motion to um, a legat meeting and try and pursue it through there. Um, because, you know, <laughs> The the, uh, the playing field was changed in February without with the, the stroke of a pen, and I find that totally unacceptable because it is all of us who sit around this table and our communities who are then left with a bit of a, a mess as a result. And it's, it is out of our hands, so I would like to see us um, uh, write this letter and take it as the first step in the process. Um, Councillor Cordover, did you want to close the motion? Thank you, Mayor. Just to say that 184 submissions is such a significant number that the people of Kingborough have sent us as a council a message and I think we need to react accordingly. We need to show that we have listened to the community and we will react to the community uh, in, in a spirit of, of, of goodwill and listening to, to what they want. And so um, I acknowledge that even if it comes back from senior council that in fact, it was all a misunderstanding and, and our bylaw is actually totally fine. I still think we need to send a message to the state government that we have concerns, we want the state government to be agile and to listen to our concerns when we have them. Thanks. Thank you. I'll put the motion now. It is moved by Councillor Cordover. It's seconded by Councillor Midgley and that we write to the Minister regarding the Health and Environmental Services bylaw. All those in favour? Against? Uh, division is required. All those in favour? It's councillors Cordova, Midgley, Fox, Bastone, Westwood and Reet. Those against? Councillors Wass, Gladewright and Street. The motion is carried. Uh.